So we ask ourselves today, did Gerber go too far by going too small? So we're looking here today at the Gerber pack hatchet. And Brian, what are you rocking? The Fiskars X7. And we're also going to be putting this little pack hatchet up against an Ontario SP10 Raider buoy. And so the reason that we're testing this out today is because this has the potential to kind of be a blending of both worlds. This thing is small and very compact, so it won't take up a large footprint in your day pack, but it's designed as a hatchet to do a lot of work. But Brian, we're a little concerned. Right. I mean, I think that we've reviewed enough gear in, or tools in some way that tried to do too many tasks instead of doing one thing really well. And like we were talking, I mean, this needs to do things adequately mm -hmm. that it says it's going to do for us to, to convince us to carry it. Right. And to eliminate the need for, say, a larger hatchet that's heavier, like the X7, or a large chopping knife like the SP-10 Raider. So let's break out the pack hatchet, put it to the test, put it head to head against this blade and hatchet and see if it is a blending of both worlds or if it just falls a little too short. All right, let's go ahead and get it into the specs here and we'll talk a lot about just performance and what this has to offer before we bring in the other two tools and go head to head with those and how it, they compare. But uh, what we're looking at is Chinese made, uh, it is made out of three CR 13 MOV steel, which is what you see in a lot of these kind of budget friendly hatchets and tomahawks. So I've used it a lot with these. It's decent. You have to resharpen it a lot. So, I mean, you're, you know, it's a budget friendly tool and it's very easy to get a good edge on it, but they do tend to kind of roll and, and chip pretty easily, uh, depending on, you know, how hard you're using the tool. So that's just something to consider. You're, you know, going to have to sharpen it pretty frequently and particularly with the face and just the grind angle that they decide to go with, which is nice and fine and sharp. But it, uh, if you're hitting, you know, rock as you're chopping or, you know, you're hitting really tough knots, it could, you know, roll the blade pretty easily. Um, but, you know, it's, it's stereotypical of what you're going to see in this price range and, and pretty, pretty normal, pretty tough steel. You know, it's not going to snap and break or anything like that. So overall from top to bottom is nine and a half inches overall length from front by the edge to the back hammering pommel per portion is going to be five inches and then the actual cutting edge is three inches three and a half sorry 3.5 three and a half inches overall it's going to weigh in at one pound uh four ounces and i believe that is with the sheath because i weighed it and it was 1.1 ounces or sorry 1.1 pounds which would be like around 17 ounces so uh something to consider there it, that must that weight must be with the sheath based off of what i'm looking at is about 17 ounces on the tool itself and then we are looking at a thickness of about 2.0.24, so just a hair under a quarter inch thick. And so we did a bunch of tasks with this guy, doing a lot of different work, and uh, just seeing how it kind of performs, which we'll talk about here in just a second. How does it chop? How does it hack? How does it delimb? How does it split? How does it carve? Uh, and is this something that makes sense? You know, it is very compact. It is somewhat lightweight at 17 ounces, maybe, uh, you know, 19 ounces with the sheath. The sheath here is very basic. It's just a basic nylon. It does have a belt loop as well as a little attachment there and then Velcro it just slips in. For the price uh, that we'll hit here in just a moment, it's very doable and, you know, very similar to a lot of what you're gonna find on the market from other companies. So one benefit to this tool is that it's super inexpensive. I paid about $24 for it. It'll go anywhere between like 25 and 30 bucks. Depends on where you purchase it. So at the end of this video, if this tool or the other two tools connect with you, we'll have those hyperlinks below to Blade HQ as well as Amazon. Really helps us out when you guys use those hyperlinks to uh, help just support the channel. It's free for you and it fills the gas tank of Gideon's Tactical and helps me buy more gear, test out just like this one because I went out and purchased this bad boy for us to test out and review. But there is steep competition in price because this Fiskars x7 is right around the same price between 25 and 30 bucks just depends on who what when where why again links below amazon blade hq and there are plenty of really solid choppers out there around that same price point like the kershaw camp 10 which we previously reviewed in years past that's a great budget-friendly chopper or for not much more you can get a usa made ontario sp10 for about 50 dollars so the pack hatchet is a great value but it does have that steep competition with the other tools that we're using today because they are similar in price and finally i want to remind you about our knock around sunglass affiliate as well simple way for you to help support the channel if you're looking for good sunglasses and eyewear for the entire family 
inexpensive but very high performing. That's another simple way to help support the channel, links below. All right, folks, so you've seen the pack hatchet itself, and now let's bring in the footage and just let's, let's discuss the X7 and the Raider buoy or any other, you know, large chopper machete style knife that you may have. And how do, do the, how do they compare with the pack hatchet? And, you know, we went out there, we did very similar tasks with all three so we could get a pretty good data point. You know, we delimbed with all three tools and then we split with all three tools and then we chopped with all three tools. So we got a real good feel for how all three of these are balanced, what they can do, what they can't and Brian you really came up with a good way to communicate how all three work together and how they compare to the pack hatch and what, what were you telling me or what we were discussing just a moment ago I really think that whether you have the Fiskars X7 or something like that's the Raider buoy size and weight that each of those tools can do the work of the, the those other ones just as good as chopping doing those kind of things and it's almost like Gerber tried to take what they thought, I guess, was the best of each of those two tools and try to combine them. And you don't really need to do that because you can use either one of those other two tools in the X7 or the buoy to do chopping, to do processing wood, to, and actually even the buoy is actually great because you can still do knife tasks with it as well. Yeah, so what we've really come yeah. to the conclusion in everything from the splitting is really difficult with the Gerber. Mm -hmm. You're basically gonna have to use it almost like a batoning like style like you mm -hmm. would with the knife anyway. Uh, it's more, really, wrist, more wrist action yeah, we were talking about. Way more it, wrist arm. action. The chopping of like actual logs or smaller branches that are, you know, like the size of your forearm. That's gonna be all wrist action, Brian, like you were saying. It was like it was tough getting through those logs, and you can hear our comments when we were chopping on it. It was pretty crazy. And even even because of its short handle, you're you're ramming your hand a lot of the time. Brian hit his hand several times while he was delimbing, uh, whereas you have a lot more distance with the with the knife or with the X7. Uh, and then with chopping tasks and delimbing, it just it just is way easier because the balance on the Fiskars X7 is all at the head where you want it, and the blade is much wider so that you can split the wood very easily, or it bites in without a lot of wrist action, mm -hmm. and the the tool is doing the work. Right. Basically, what we're finding is that the the uh, pack hatchet you have to do the work and the hatchet will not exactly <laughs> it's kind of like having another friend that you that hangs out with your group and they always forget their money when you go to the the movies or they're like oh we just going out to eat oh i forgot my wallet in the car and you're always paying for them like you're doing their work when they need to bring and bring carry their own weight that's exactly, I feel like, what the hatchet's, that pocket hatchet is doing. It's not carrying its own weight. And it's making you work. like that. <laughs> yeah, the pocket hatchet is almost the size of your pocket. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, that's really what we're seeing in the performance is that really the only areas where I saw any sort of success was with light delimbing because the blade face is so thin. It does delimb really well, but again, mm -hmm. you're so close that you're getting right. really close to other branches and stuff and you're knocking things and you know just not a lot of... of swing action uh, and then if you needed some finer cutting you it is better than the fiskars but the knife is going to do way better in right. that re regard and still be able to ch out chop and out split this little hatchet so guys in, in, it really is not making a lot of sense for us plus it looks the buoy looks way cooler i it, just want to say it does i mean it, it's like I rambo mean, rambo is saying hey come with me let's have a fun time <laughs> and really the combination of this pack hatchet being something that's really compact rather lightweight that you can throw inside a day pack and use it to either get kindling and small firewood chop split do that type of thing uh, or maybe build a shelter you know if you got stuck out there overnight but be able to carry it almost anywhere anytime when you're on light day excursions that idea really connected with me i was like that's a pretty cool idea but in reality when it comes to performance for a little bit of a larger footprint for you know four or five ounces more if you do actually need to chop, if you do actually need to split and do those type of things, either a large blade or a slightly larger hatchet will make more sense or just ditch that idea altogether and go with a light duty to mid-weight survival knife that's gonna weigh like 12 ounces like an SE6 or a BK7. So we have some final thoughts about the Gerber, I call it the little pocket ax. Um, it's a great, in concept, it's a great try to do what, what Gerber's trying to do with this. I think we're talking about, you know, some of the concepts trying to blend the tool right. usefulness. I, I wouldn't have bought it if I didn't think there was a potential for it to right. do, do good. I mean, we've outlined some of the things that we thought could be changed or made better, but still, it's just not practical for what it's trying to do. Yeah. 
So, yeah. so guys, that's our final thoughts. Uh, hopefully this video is just showing you what this little pack axe, pack hatchet can do, <laughs> what it can't do, which is a lot, um, and whether or not it's gonna be the right tool to put in your backpack or not. Uh, so thank you so much for coming over here today and checking out the channel. Please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. Love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And if you're not a current subscriber, we invite you to become part of the GT family. Hang out with my cameraman Brian and I and have a good time and have fun every single week, week in, week out. Don't forget about the mailbag. Put hashtag mailbag and ask a question. It might be answered in an upcoming video. And uh, finally, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there. Nice. <laughs>